Roman. Get off my fucking TV and save me the misery. And all you fucking goons, just grab a cold beer. The man of the hour is finally here. J.D. from New York, 206, it's time for off the script. J.D. from New York, 206, it's time for off the script. What is going on, guys? J.D. from New York. Here, thank you for tuning back into the channel. Today is Summer Slam Sunday, Summer Slam 2016. Tonight, live on the WWE Network from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. This is off the script, episode 131, part number three for your Sunday, August 21st, 2016. Sorry for the lack of introduction on part three. As I record this, it is 12.18 a.m. I don't want to sound like a fucking goon to everybody upstairs. I don't want to be loud and boisterous. I already recorded my off the script. I'm recording this intro last because I'm trying to do fucking six things at one time. As I'm recording this, I did an NXT review and results. I recorded off the script. I got to get all these videos up because Labar is going to be in town uh, on Sunday morning. And we're going to go into Manhattan. We're going to go... Visit Chris Jericho and Matt Hardy, I believe, and Christian. We're all going to be there hanging out with those guys, and it's going to be fucking awesome. So I'm going to have a action-packed fucking day for you guys. So make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, man. It's going to be a huge day. As you guys are seeing this, I'm in Manhattan right now, and then uh, towards the later afternoon, 2, 3, 4, we're going to be in Brooklyn at 205th American Bar and Grill. We're going to be hosting a Q&A. We're going to be... Uh, watching the pre-show, drink specials, there's going to be a DJ, I'm going to be there with Justin Labar, we're going to be having fun, make sure you guys show up, call me a fucking goon, whatever the case may be, we will be there, what happens after that, I don't know, either way, I'm watching SummerSlam, I'm going to try and get up a review of some sort to you guys later on tonight, don't know what's going to happen with that, I am playing it by ear right now because Justin Labar is a man of many surprises, I don't know what the fuck's going on with that, but I will be with him the majority of Sunday so make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. This is Off The Script, episode 131, part number three. The number one fucking podcast in your subscription boxes. Right here on YouTube.com. So thank you guys so much for joining me on your Sunday mornings. We got a lot to go over. If you guys missed anything that I did this week, NXT included... I got breaking news on SummerSlam. All the hottest stories going into SummerSlam. Literally, not going to go over everything because I'll be here forever. Everything you guys need is down in the description below of this very video. Make sure you guys go check that out. I will have more WW2K17 content coming up. The finals for my King of the Ring Road to 2K17 finals between AJ Styles and Sami Zayn. That's coming up next week. So much shit coming up for you guys. But if you missed anything, links will be down in the description below. Barbershop window, if you guys want to go get your t-shirts, man. Roman Reigns, get off my TV. Big Show, get off my TV. The Four Goons, Kane, Ryback, Big Show, and Braun Strowman, get off my TV. The Goon City t-shirt. And the gray off the script original logo shirt. Barbershop window, affiliated through Pro Wrestling Tees and One Hour Tees. Link is down below if you guys want to go get your t-shirts, man. $19.99. They ship internationally, worldwide, so no matter where you are, you can always represent off the script. My buddies over at WrestleRumble.com, and today is the last day. You have up, you have up until 6 p.m., I believe, to get your picks in. WrestleRumble.com, and use your knowledge to the test and have some fun with SummerSlam tonight. Going to be fucking unbelievable. First prize is $750 cash, plus a choice of any t-shirt on ProWrestlingTees.com. There will be second and third place prizes as well. It's WrestleRumble.com. Fill out the entry form, gain entry, and have some fun using your knowledge to pick all the winners of SummerSlam 2016. My friends over at WrestleCrate.com. Use the coupon code JD sent me for an instant 10% off of your first purchase. No matter you get the regular crate or the ultimate crate, JD sent me for an instant 10% off. 
Subscribe to the channel, as always. I don't know what the fuck you guys are waiting for. And please check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Read the mission statement on there. Find out what I'm about, why I'm doing this, where I want to go. If you guys feel the urge to pledge, never an obligation, always appreciated. Thank you to everybody that pledged towards the Patreon account. That's patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Enough of the talking. Let's get into the news for this SummerSlam edition of Off The Script, episode 131, part number three. We finally have a reason as to why Eva Marie's suspension happened. Eva Marie's suspension revealed and she plans to appeal. It was reported that WWE superstar Eva Marie has been suspended for 30 days for violating the company's wellness policy. As you guys know, according to a report from TMZ Sports, the reason that she was suspended was because of the drug Adderall that was found in her system. However, she is insistent that she had a prescription and plans to appeal the suspension that was handed to her by WWE. This is breaking news about Eva Marie's suspension for the WWE's wellness policy violation that was issued to her this current week. Adderall, as you guys know, was the same drug that Roman Reigns was nailed for for his 30-day suspension and it's unbelievable that it seems like everybody in the WWE is failing the, the drug policy violation for literally the same thing. And if it's the same thing, WWE might need to alter that. Because for something like that, I don't know, man. I, I don't see it as being a huge deal as a PED or HGH or estrogen or anything else that these guys are taking to legitimately cheat the system. You know, I, I, don't, I don't really consider... Adderall, and, and you know, I, I really didn't state this when I talked about it with Roman Reigns. You know, you know, we all fucking poked fun at Roman Reigns, and we don't know why these guys were taking Adderall. We don't know why Eve Marie was taking Adderall. According to her, she had a prescription for it. Roman Reigns, I don't think, I didn't, I don't think he had a prescription for it. So we were a little bit more harsh on him because he was the champion. Okay, that's why we were harsh on Roman Reigns. We were harsh on Reigns because he was the WWE champion. He was the leader of that locker room. That's why we were harsh on Roman Reigns. When you look at Eve Marie and the situation that's happening with her right now, and the same drug that she took was the same one that Roman Reigns was taking, she's not really in a position where she's champion of the women's locker room. She's not the number one go-to women wrestler in the WWE. She said that she had a prescription for it. This may be one of those things that... It was just unjustly wrong in Eva Marie's case. And I don't know what's going on with this, but obviously if she has a prescription for it, WWE didn't give two fucks about the prescription that she had for the Adderall. The paperwork that Eva Marie is referring to is her prescription for Adderall according to Daily Wrestling News, which she tested positive for and caused her to violate the policy resulting in the suspension. If you recall, Adderall was also, like I said, the same drug Roman took to miss 30 days last month. Confirmation from WWE was never announced publicly, but they are not required to release the drug in question in these matters. A WWE source noted that the medication is not approved by the company, but since Eve Marie insists she had a prescription for the medical from a medical professional, she will appeal the suspension. It's unlikely that it will be overturned over the course of the next month, but the best Eva might hope for is the financial compensation for the month's worth of missed time. WWE requires th their performance to disclose to them the medications that they will be taking and must be approved by the company. In this case, the medication was not given approval and therefore Eva Marie was suspended. She issued the following statement to TMZ regarding the suspension. I am disappointed that this suspension has occurred, yet understand and respect the WWE and, and the fact that they're going to uphold their wellness policy to the letter and won't compromise on its integrity. I violated the policy by not turning in portions of required paperwork in the, in the time frame WWE Medical deemed timely. I look forward to my return, end quote. There are now 13 un, or 13 advertised matches, unadvertised matches, which should have been the fucking case because the build for SummerSlam has been fucking awful. There are now 13 advertised matches for Sunday SummerSlam, including the multi-woman match, which Eve Marie was originally booked in. The WWE website still lists the match... On the card, acknowledging Eva Marie's suspension casts a cloud of uncertainty over the match. Who gives a fuck? 
Nobody wanted to see the match anyway. So I doubt anybody's going to be interested in the match now that Eve Marie is not in it. Who gives a shit? As of now, it's being billed as a three-on-two handicap match, putting Becky Lynch, Carmella, and Naomi against Natalia and Alexa Bliss. Nikki Bella could come back as being rumored she is medically cleared by WWE if they want to go that route. There has been some speculation that Nikki Bella could be inserted into the match to replace Eve Marie, but that could prove tricky to bring a returning Nikki back to a heel team. There is also the chance that WWE could use Nia Jax in that role in, in a spot fill-in, one-time deal, though she is a member of the Raw roster. I don't want to see it happen. I, I really don't want to see that happen. Brand exclusivity, you don't want to do it because someone got suspended. It's not Nia Jax's fault. Don't ruin the integrity of the brand split. Keep it as is. If you need to make it a three-on-two handicap match, I'd rather be that than have Nia Jax, who's Raw, working for a SmackDown team. Does not make sense. Besides figuring out how the company proceeds with the women's match on Sunday, hey, I'll give you an idea. Not have it happen whatsoever. Not everybody needs to be booked for this pay-per-view. Meanwhile, WWE wanted to get everybody who's a fucking employee on this card. For whatever reason, I don't know why. It will be interesting to see how they book Eva Marie upon her return next month. Unfortunately, the suspension will run through September 11th's Backlash, which is SmackDown's live first brand exclusive pay-per-view, meaning Eva will miss two marquee events. Just like Alberto Del Rio. The only difference is Del Rio's time may be running out in WWE completely, while Eva Marie's main roster career has just started to take off. Or lack thereof, I should say. It's not really taken off. But Del Rio, he's on his way out. We discussed that um, already. Del Rio is probably on his way out of WWE. He doesn't need the WWE. WWE doesn't want him. They stripped him down completely from everything that made him unique. We discussed this already. Eva Marie, she'll bounce back from this. Um, something really needs to be done if everybody's being nailed for the same thing. They, they might need to tweak the wellness policy. We were hard on Roman Reigns because he was the WWE champion. You should know your limitations as the champion. That's why we were hard on him. Eva Marie, I'm not going to completely blame her for the suspension. You know, WWE might be using this, and I don't, I haven't read anything. I might, I, I, I don't know where... Um, this could be reported, but I I'm just taking a shot in the dark here. It, it might be WWE is trying to pretty much bounce back from the Brock Lesnar situation and trying to uphold their wellness policy. Being that Lesnar has come under a lot of scrutiny for not being suspended for obviously being one who violated the policy. If he failed a USADA drug test, more than likely, he's going to fail a WWE-administered drug test. WWE might be using Eve Marie, Alberto Dori, on Page as fucking scapegoats here. I don't know. I would not be shocked if that's the case. If that comes out, I would not be shocked at all. I have not read anything of such. I have not heard rumors about that. I'm taking a shot in the dark here. They might be using the Brock Lesnar situation and want to sweep that under the rug. And they're using all three of these WWE superstars as a crutch. To pretty much kind of rectify what happened with Brock Lesnar. I don't know. I don't know. Call me crazy. Let me know what you guys think about that one. But Eve Marie, you know, it ended up being her fault. WWE said that she did not get the paperwork and the letter from the doctor in time. And she failed the drug test. She got nailed for it. So I don't know what's going on with that. Either way, she's get off my TV for 30 days. Whether she comes back and they resume her push, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. We're going to have to wait and see. But Eve Marie, she's not going to protest. I, I don't think... She, she can protest all she wants I don't, or, or appeal. It's not going to fucking overturn anything. By the time the appeal process ends, it, it'll probably be time for her to come back to work anyway. So it really doesn't fucking matter. You know, Paige got suspended on her birthday, her 24th birthday. Alberto Del Rio really doesn't give a shit. I think he's on his way out of WWE. And anyway, he's got an out clause. He can leave at any time. I'm more concerned about Del Rio... And his spot on SmackDown, leaving another gaping hole in that roster. There's a lot of gaping holes on that roster. So right now, losing Del Rio, a quality hand is going to, again, minus one from that SmackDown roster in which it does not need to minus anything. You need to add. Anytime we see SmackDown minusing someone off the roster, they're more and more in trouble. We don't want to see that happen. Paige is on Raw, obviously. Um, I would like to see Paige in a more vibrant role in the women's division. Looks like her relationship with Del Rio really got the best of her. She really hasn't been concentrating on her work. This is clear as day. I mentioned this already. 
And I don't know what's going on with that. Rumors going around that she's injured. But who knows what's going on, man? We're gonna, only time will tell. With all three of these individuals, only time will tell. Eve Marie will be back. Del Rio, not so much. Paige, she's only 24 years old. She's not going anywhere. She'll be back on TV. Del Rio is the one that has the biggest question mark looming over him. But it's been a crazy week for suspensions. WWE, again, possibly using all three of these, of these stars as a crutch to pretty much lend some credibility to their wellness policy in the light of Brock Lesnar. I don't know about that. Let me know what you guys think about that notion. WWE Superstar Cesaro to move to WWE SmackDown Live in a possible trade. WWE Superstar Cesaro has been one of the bright spots in WWE for years now. He upped his game even more so after his tag team partner Tyson Kidd went down with a career-threatening injury after a scary landing in a match with Samoa Joe. While it is unknown if Kidd will ever return to the ring, Cesaro is almost fighting for his friend, and 2015 was the year of Cesaro's best work, possibly. Sadly, he had to leave due to a shoulder injury, but he did come back as good as ever. Most fans assumed that when the WWE draft and brand split came, Cesaro would easily be one of the top stars on one of the rosters. However, he ended up going to a very stacked WWE Raw brand that had Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Chris Jericho, Sheamus, and Finn Balor, and many, many more. This doesn't even include the tag teams or female superstars that also would need time on Raw. Cesaro even mentioned he may be... He may belong more on WWE SmackDown Live, and this could not be any further from the truth. This may actually happen as well. According to Daily Wrestling News, it is being said that Cesaro's current storyline on Raw will eventually lead to his move to the blue brand. This comes right after the news of Randy Orton and Kevin Owens possibly switching brands. This could mean a possible trade may occur. Or, this could be complete bullshit, and the Sheamus Best of Seven series could really land Cesaro to move over to SmackDown. Maybe they intertwine some kind of storyline into this in which the loser would leave Raw and it would come down to a 3-3 tie. You add a nice stipulation to the end of that. Listen, you know, we went this far. I'm tired of this shit. Loser leaves Raw. Get him off the fucking brand. That could possibly happen. I'm just saying. I don't know any inside information. I could see it happening. Seriously. As of right now, the only way for someone like Cesaro could move or to move to the red brand is in a trade unless they have a loser leaves raw match which i just mentioned with him and another superstar it is unlikely that stephanie mcmahon or mick foley would allow for such a match to happen especially so soon however a trade would make a lot of sense if both brands knew they were getting something big out of the trade getting randy orton for raw in a trade that would send owens and cesaro to smackdown live could be a smart trade for both brands i would do it if i was smackdown i would trade orton I would, if I was raw, I would trade Cesaro and Owens for Randy Orton. I think it's going to help bolster SmackDown immensely. That's just me, though. But I could certainly see that happening. But I face Randy Orton on Monday Night Raw. I don't know. Face Randy Orton really doesn't do anything for me at all. And I know I had a couple people come at me already saying, Oh, JT, why are you speaking bad about Randy Orton, man? He's still a main event guy, man. Yeah, he's still a main event guy as a heel. As a baby face, he makes me want to fucking puke. It's disgusting. So Randy Orton could move in a possible trade over to Raw. Could send Owens and Cesaro to SmackDown. Could be a smart trade for both brands. Basically, Raw gets a top veteran that has been in the main event scene for more than a couple of years. Meanwhile, SmackDown gets two big up-and-coming stars that could help the blue brand a lot. Plus, there's a big chance that both men get more of an opportunity to be used on SmackDown. Definitely true. Right now, Raw has to get a lot of people's attention... And they have to get a lot of people on television. Sami Zayn, in fact, isn't even being used right now the way he should be being used. And, and at one point, he was slated to miss SummerSlam. In fact, they actually booked him in a match that makes no sense, teaming with Neville against the Dudleys. So Sami Zayn and Neville, both on the show, pre-show, but they're on the SummerSlam card nonetheless. Doesn't help the fact that WWE had nothing planned for Sami Zayn and Neville, and now they're in a match that literally... Nobody gives two flying fucks about. But despite Sami Zayn not being on SummerSlam at one point this week, and now he's on the card, he won his match against Kevin Owens at Battleground last month. Match of the night, one of the best matches of the year. Zayn could be big for Monday Night Raw, but he's being overshadowed by everybody else on the brand. And a move to SmackDown for Sami Zayn could be great as well. We also have not even added in what WWE will do with the NXT stars once they get called up. Well, after... 
We've seen NXT TakeOver in Brooklyn. Bailey's obviously moving up. Samoa Joe lost the title to Nakamura. He may be moving up. Where are they going? Raw? Or, or, or are they going to, to, to SmackDown? Is, is Joe going to go to SmackDown? I would love for Joe to go to SmackDown. You know, I think he could be the fucking heel that they need on SmackDown. Please, let it happen. Can you imagine Samoa Joe and AJ Styles in the main event for the WWE Championship? Please. My cock is getting hard at the moment. No, not really, but you guys get the fucking, the, the fucking, uh, you know, thought behind that. I would love to see that. The legs of Nakamura. Oh, what did you do was talk about cock, man. Give me a break, man. So did Andrew Dice Clay. Look at where it got him. Biggest fucking comedian of all time, or at least one of them. The likes of Shinsuke Nakamura, Samoa Joe, and Bayley are all rumored to be called up this year. With that being known, the company has to figure out how to use everybody in a good way, or things won't go well for WWE in this new brand split era, the new era. For the most part, SmackDown Live has been using talent quite well. Um, I don't know where they get off writing something like that, but uh, no, they have not. Some, yes, all, no. Just look at the tag team division. That's using talent quite well. Please. Fucking laughable fucking comment there. They've been using talent quite well. Yeah, the fucking 12-man tag we're going to see at SummerSlam is using the tag team division quite well, right? Excluding American Alpha. They've been looking like the alpha team of that division. The rest of them? Please. Garbage. The show seems to be better organized, and overall, the fans have enjoyed SmackDown more than Raw the last few weeks. Due to this, I haven't enjoyed anything. I haven't enjoyed anything, man. Bits and pieces here and there, but bits and pieces don't make a good show. Raw has so much talent with no way to use them right, so sparing two to get one big name could be good for both brands. Cesaro would obviously be a favorite to the fans on SmackDown, and it's likely a world title match could come at some point. Again, Styles Cesaro for the WWE Championship. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it a lot. You can say the same about Owens if he moves to SmackDown. With Cena being part-time and Bray Wyatt seemingly fighting injuries, the fact that the show is very top-heavy with little-known mid-card talent, Cesaro alone would be a huge help in various places for SmackDown. And it would be a smart move to come up with Cesaro and a storyline to move over to SmackDown and send him there. Fans would most likely be all for it, as it would be best for business. Listen, obviously we all know Moves need to happen to bolster SmackDown. Cesaro, obviously, is one of those guys, just like Sami Zayn, that's going to get lost in the shuffle because WWE is concentrating on Rollins and Reigns and Balor and all their top guys, right? All, all their hand-picked guys. Guys like Zayn and Neville and Cesaro. Guys like that are going to be overshadowed. And they don't, they don't deserve to be overshadowed. This is, they don't deserve to be overshadowed. This is a new era. And a new era means we need to see and want to see new talent being brought up. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Cesaro are on the cusp of being main event talents. They have everything that it takes to be a main event level talent. SmackDown might be the brand for that to happen. Do something about it. But we all can be in agreement here that something needs to happen. Hopefully, we get what we want in the form of a Zayn, a Cesaro, or Kevin Owens moving over to SmackDown via a storyline on Raw or a trade happening with Raw and SmackDown. But something needs to happen. James Storm, done with Impact Wrestling. Possible return to NXT. This is unbelievable here. James Storm is one of those guys that I wanted to see in WWE. In fact, he was in NXT for just a little bit. He was in NXT for a cup of tea, right? The world of professional wrestling is a weird, weird place. They share similarities to professional sports organizations, except for the fact that they don't have an off-season. There is free agency, and the wrestlers take full advantage of that. Starting on the independent scene, it's basically a free agent's dream to work. Sports entertainment outside of the WWE is still popular and offers ample opportunities. Talent in pro wrestling can work for multiple independent promotions. Ryback, who was just officially released by the WWE, is charging nearly $5,000 per appearance. Really? $5,000 for appearance. You're going to pay Ryback $5,000 to put the people to sleep. Great job, man. I think he's overcharging. I think Ryback is uh, big up here. And uh, there's not much going on up there. I don't know what the fuck he's thinking about, but 
Ryback is not worth a $5,000 appearance. Absolutely not. Some wrestlers even make a living working the independents. Jay Lethal wrestled in other promotions for years becoming, or before committing to Ring of Honor. Before Lucha Underground, all those guys and girls travel the world in different promotions while making a name for themselves. Quite the opposite has happened with Impact Wrestling. Instead of it being a full-time wrestling promotion that can sustain itself, they have turned it into a glorified indie promotion and simply won't admit it. Talent has left and signed with WWE. Bobby Roode, Eric Young, Samoa Joe, Austin Aries, all from TNA. Some of the biggest names in the history of that company have gone over to TNA and WWE. However, one wrestler who arrived right after Samoa Joe decided not to stay with NXT, James Storm, appeared for an episode or two, but he left and re-signed with TNA Impact. He didn't take advantage of the free agent system. It was a huge surprise to many. Storm seemed re-energized in NXT, and the step was a big one for his career. Then he went back to TNA. Many believed it was a huge mistake as fans are souring on Impact Wrestling by the day, but I think they're a little bit better, and I even admitted that TNA seems like they're slowly turning the corner, and I want to see them succeed because they, they got a nice crop of talent over there, you know? Apparently, his latest tenure in Impact Wrestling didn't last as long as many thought. According to SEScoops.com, James Storm is done with TNA and may be heading back to NXT. We're not sure if this is part of a storyline or not, but James Storm announced at Wednesday's TNA Impact tapings in Orlando that he's done with the company due to BS contract stuff that went on behind the scenes. I don't know what that could mean, but obviously if James Storm signed the contract and he signed the contract and left TNA, obviously it was for more money. TNA offered him more money. Maybe they weren't paying him on time. I don't know. We don't know any of that shit. It's all speculative rumors right now, but... James Storm said it's BS contract stuff, in quotes. Storm went on to thank the TNA fans and said that he wanted his last match to be against Bram. He also teased that we may see him team with an old friend soon, and an apparent tease at joining Bobby Roode in NXT. There was no real reason why Storm left NXT in the first place, but multiple outlets did report Impact Wrestling was willing to offer him over double than what WWE was offering. Listen, you can't blame him. You know, WWE shouldn't blame him either. They wanted Storm, but they didn't. They really didn't want Storm. They wanted him, but they didn't. So TNA Impact, you know, his home, the place where he's been all these years, offered him more money. They didn't want to lose him. You know, they figured they have big plans in the future. Obviously, a lot of changes are going to happen. They wanted Bobby, uh, not Bobby, they wanted James Storm to be a part of those, those changes. So they offered him double the money. And you can't blame him for taking the better offer. He's got a family to feed. He wants to make money. You know, you're never going to... You know, people people don't understand that, that money goes a long way. And if you're doing something that you're passionate about and that you love, you want to be rewarded. So James Storm figured, you know what? I'm going to go back home. I'm going to go back where I'm comfortable. I'm going to go back where everybody knows me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the money that I want. You can't blame him for that. I don't blame him for that. You know? It sucks as a fan, because I wanted to see him in NXT, but now we might have that opportunity. Storm probably made a mistake, but to the wrestlers, money has always been an important consideration. Simply put, money and dates are vital to deals with pro wrestlers. The WWE has a rare opportunity if they can have Storm and Bobby Roode on the same roster. After Roode made his debut on WWE NXT and what we've seen from TakeOver Brooklyn, obviously Bobby Roode is not going to be teaming with James Storm and reforming beer money. Not going to fucking happen. He instantly turned heel and now is an internet sensation. Thanks to Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano, the glorious bomb has struck a chord with WWE Universe and is being replicated by fans across the world. Rude's popularity would play right into a return by James Storm. Beer Money is arguably one of the best tag teams of the last decade. They broke up and Rude turned heel in TNA. That led to a TNA World Heavyweight Championship run where he became the It Factor. Well, WWE has the It Factor now. All they need is the other half of beer money to recreate that glorious tandem. You know? Maybe they can hold G uh, James Storm off television for a little bit. Bring him back. Make sure he's signed to a contract. Make sure he stays in NXT this time. Bobby Roode, no doubt in my mind, is going to be a major, major, major star player for NXT. He may very well be the NXT World Champion before the end of the year when all is said and done. There's no way someone that popular right out of the gate without wrestling a live match on television is that fucking over. There's no way. Maybe Bobby Roode wins the title and James Storm. Again, you kind of you recreate that storyline. 
an ex tag team partner, jealous of his uh, of his former partner, you know, succeeding and achieving so much success, comes in, fucks him up, ruins ruins the opportunity for him, gets his revenge. We could see a James Storm versus Bobby Roode match in NXT. I'd love to see that. You know, there's various ways to go about it, but James Storm looks to be done with Impact Wrestling right now. Possible return to NXT. It's all speculative rumor right now. Nothing is concrete, so we're going to have to wait and see until more comes out about the story. But right now, James Storm is done with Impact Wrestling, according to SEScoops.com. Backstage notes on why former WWE superstars decided not to return for the brand split. And I'm not really going to go over all of this. Obviously, we've been talking about this for several weeks now. Rumors swirling around that Goldberg, Angle, Jeff Hardy. You know, Jeff Hardy's still with TNA. Kurt Angle's a free agent. He's doing independent work here and there. He's with What Culture Pro Wrestling. Goldberg has been teasing a return to the company and uh, a match with Brock Lesnar. Rey Mysterio, obviously, is contracted to Lucha Underground. He's not going anywhere. But other names they were talking about is Shelton Benjamin, you know, they were talking about MVP. They brought back Kurt Hawkins and, and uh, Jinder Mahal for enhancement talents. Rhino was brought up to the main roster as an enhancement talent. But the main names there were Carlito, Shelton Benjamin, and uh, you guys get the point. Th those are the names they were going after. The first part of the plan was to promote a contingent of NXT superstars without leaving the developmental um, territory, you know, bare bones. They didn't want to leave NXT you know, pretty much ruined. That was their mindset. So they promoted six. Six was the number. How they came up with that number, I don't know. That's why WWE fans witnessed the immediate impact of Finn Balor and American Alpha for the same reasons that Samoa Joe, Nakamura, and Bayley remain in NXT. The second part of the plan was to reach out to former WWE superstars who could still go, but were willing to put their peers ahead of themselves. They wanted old-time talent that were familiar with the company to put over new talent. That's what they wanted. But the main reason we do not see the returns from past stars is not necessarily because of where, they'd be, where they would be positioned in WWE, but rather the offers they received to come back. Wrestling Inc. reports that WWE reached out to many former employees with the hopes of beefing up the talent pool, but were turned away more times than not. I mentioned Jinder Mahal, Rhino, Shelton Benjamin, Kurt Hawkins. Shelton Benjamin was due to come back, but he took a WWE physical, failed, and WWE realized he had a torn rotator cuff, so... He's out for six months, plus some, and we're not going to see Shelton Benjamin until 2017, if WWE still wants him. Of those four, only Mahal and Rhino have been used on television. Kurt Hawkins is on his way. Benjamin, like I said, torn rotator cuff, won't be back until 2017, if the offer is still on the table. It's been confirmed that WWE reached out to MVP and Tommy Dreamer. I don't know why they reached out to Tommy Dreamer, though I love Tommy. Born and raised in New York. But both were turned down. And at least in MVP's case, talks are officially dead. Deader than a fucking zombie in The Walking Dead. Dreamer stated that he had too many other projects to be able to commit to a full-time WWE schedule. Don't know why WWE would actually have Tommy Dreamer commit to a full-time schedule. That is absolutely ludicrous. As someone his age, no. Sorry. And since there appeared to be no wiggle room, he had to specifically... Uh, and respectfully decline that offer. They actually wanted him a full-time WWE employee, and you know Tommy Dreamer runs his House of Hardcore promotion. He would actually have to step away from that. Why would you ever do that? Why would WWE ever, ever fucking force that upon somebody? He's made a name for himself in a fucking promotion that he built, right? Why would you take him away from that? To do what? Lose every week? Come on, bro. It's not fair. Absolutely not right. But the money being the deciding factor, as in most cases, it's interesting that Ryback is commanding 5000 per appearance on the independent scene. He has had no trouble making that type of money. And with other wrestlers certainly seeing that news, the feeling is that, financially, they can be doing better pursuing similar opportunities and work a much lighter schedule in the process. Ryback is uh, forcing things uh, not to go WWE's way. 5000 per appearance, people actually paying this fucking goon. $5,000 per appearance. All the wrestlers are seeing this and be like, listen, I got to go back to WWE for less money. Low ball offers. Meanwhile, Ryback is making $5,000 per appearance. I could do that too, bro. So why the fuck would you want to do that if you're going to be making $5,000 per appearance? So Ryback seemingly fucking things up. Based on that rate and what some top TNA stars are currently making, it was discovered that some significant mid-card level talent in WWE were making less. Two names that continually come up Maybe the ones on WWE's radar, which are Carlito and John Morrison. 
We've indicated on several occasions in the past that Vince McMahon remains extremely interested in bringing Johnny Mundo back to WWE television, but with talks that he would be in a much more of an enhancement talent with a name. Now, now you're going to bring Johnny Mundo in. Johnny Mundo is going to be a fucking star. You're not going to make him an enhancement talent, Vince. What kind of fucking shit is that? Johnny Mundo has all the makings of a world champion. Don't give me that shit. Enhancement talent, John Morrison. Please. Fuck that. If I was these guys, I'd let Vince McMahon have it in person. Carlito was expected to return to a managerial capacity to help the Shining Stars get over, but all is quiet on fronts in recent weeks. Hawkins was never, never able to ascend higher than the lower mid-card, but he is set to return to SmackDown over the next couple of weeks. His first vignette reminded many fans of a blend of Tyson Kidd and Chuck Norris as his video showcased facts about the, por the former... D I was going to say the porn. I don't know why. I got even Marie fucking porn on my head. Jesus Christ. Um, Chuck Norris as his video showcased facts about the porn... Again, I was going to say it. Look at me. The former WWE superstar, including the fact that Hawkins has counted to infinity not once but twice. Should be noted that Tajiri and Brian Kendrick are expected to resign with WWE if they haven't already, but they wouldn't be back on television un until at least September when the Raw brand unveils its cruiserweight division for Monday nights. Listen, WWE needs to get out of this fucking stigma about bringing ex-talents back as merely enhancement talents. You need all the star power you can get to make that brand, SmackDown especially, legitimate. If you're going to bring in a Shelton Benjamin and a John Morrison and a Carlito, right? Those guys are big enough names that you could use them in a upper mid-card main event level, especially Morrison and Benjamin. Why would you bring in Johnny Mundo to be an enhancement talent? It makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. I don't like hearing that whatsoever. I don't blame these guys at all for turning WWE's offer down. Fuck them. If they're not going to be utilized in the way that they know they should be utilized, fuck WWE. That's it. Simple as that. Finally, guys, Roman Reigns. Can't end the fucking off the script without Roman Reigns. Possibly returning to the main event after SummerSlam. Shoot me dead right between the eyes right now. Roman Reigns is part of the amazing Samoan dynasty in WWE. Before him, relatives like Afa, Sika, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Rikishi, all paved the way. All those names but The Rock are WWE Hall of Famers, which means Roman Reigns and yes, clowns, The Rock is not in the Hall of Fame yet, which means Roman Reigns has a lot to live up to. However, fans have caused his push to come derailed, and Reigns is still trying to find his footing ever since. Rikishi, who is Roman Reigns' cousin, was talking to the two-man power trip of wrestling podcast. Don't know who they are, nor do I give a shit. And they said that WWE, or he said on that show, WWE shouldn't be trying to push Roman Reigns down the fan's throat. He says the push needs to happen organically, duh, and would be best if Reigns just turned heel, since the fans seem to want to boo him as much as they do. Wow. His own blood has a fucking brain. But Vince McMahon doesn't see it that way. Add Rikishi to the list of people who think Roman Reigns needs to be heel. And on top of that, he feels Roman shouldn't be forced down fans' throats. Look at that. As Rikishi points out, Roman Reigns is a good-looking guy with a beautiful body and a lot of talent. Rikishi sees a lot more of him than just in-ring skills and believes that Reigns is a real dude. He just believes that Roman has... Not had a chance to really let the fans know him well. And they rebel not against him, but the idea that he's forced onto something or onto them without earning it. So, the fans know, they have the idea that he's being forced onto them without earning it. Obviously, the fans are going to rebel. What happened with Roman Reigns was the same thing that happened last year with Batista. Fans previously loved Batista. The problem was that Batista was brought back and promised the world title upon his return... But there was one looming factor there, which was Daniel Bryan. Everybody wanted Daniel Bryan to be the world champion and boo Batista until the WWE had no choice but to turn him heel. It helped that, it helped that Batista wanted to be heel anyway, knowing that it was what the fans wanted. Even though Batista was on the fans' side in the entire argument of his character, they blamed him as much as they blamed the WWE. 
Batista told MLW Radio's writer's room that he needs to be a heel, and that's why he chose to leave WWE after that run and did not return. Similar to Batista, the fans who used to love Roman Reigns, uh, when The Shield was beating people left and right, the WWE Universe was behind all three men. Reigns was the big man, the muscle of the group, and he played the role well. However, since the breakup, Roman had struggled to get over with the promos, and while he's been amazing in some matches that he, that he has had, fans don't seem to want to admit it. SummerSlam is the second biggest pay-per-view of the year after WrestleMania, and Roman Reigns is battling for the United States title against Rusev. Roman is nowhere near the world title picture for now, and fans seem to appreciate his supposed demotion. However, Forbes reported that Roman Reigns might be headed back to the main event scene following SummerSlam. The reasoning is that WWE ratings and viewership have been dropping lately. It's not because of fucking Roman Reigns being out of the main event. It's because the fucking product sucks cock. That's why. With Seth Rollins and Finn Balor battling in the biggest pay-per-view of the year, main event-wise, ratings are not improving but dropping. Forbes speculates that WWE believes that this means the majority of the fans are not interested in the matches that the internet wrestling community wants to see. You know, we're interested. We just want story to go behind it. And we know your product is fucking trash. I said this already. In the video that I talked about, on YouTube, where I talked about Dean Ambrose, I even mentioned it in this fucking, the, the fucking build that I had for SummerSlam week, all weekend, and everything that I fucking recorded. I talked about WWE storylines not progressing week to week. What do you do when you watch The Walking Dead, right? They leave you with a fucking cliffhanger. I can't wait to watch next week's show. What the fuck is going to happen? You don't get that feeling when you watch WWE, not at all. WWE doesn't write to keep you intrigued. They don't write to keep you hanging on the product, waiting for that next episode. They just make you pissed off to the point where you don't watch next week's show because you know what to expect. It's predictable, same old, boring garbage. Following that first week of Monday Night Raw in the New Era, WWE has reverted right back to doing the same fucking thing. This is why ratings are fucking suffering. It's not Rollins' fault. It's not Balor's fault. It's not the fucking matches like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are having, no. It's the writing. The writing is trash. The writing is fucking garbage. That's why the ratings are going down the toilet. That, why, that, that might be why Roman Reigns opened and closed Monday Night Raw this past week. The WWE brings Roman Reigns back into the world title scene as a face to combat falling ratings. Expect the people in attendance to revolt and turn on Roman once again. Sorry. Roman is not the answer. Roman is not the answer. This is shit we've been talking about for God knows how long. Roman is not the answer. Seriously. Fucking WWE's writing staff and the creative decisions that they make are ruining the fucking show. That is the point I've been trying to get across for God knows how long. It is the fucking creative writing. If you don't leave people wanting to watch the next show, people will not tune in. They don't give a fuck. Leave people hanging on to that fucking last minute of the show, and when the show goes off the air, you can't wait till next Monday to get here. It's what every other fucking major sitcom, successful sitcom drama TV series does. They leave you wanting more. Right? The, the fucking longest reigning weekly episodic television show. How many fucking episodes did they leave you wanting more? Could probably count them on one hand. And how many years? thought so. It's not, it's not Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is not the answer. Balor and ratings aren't to blame for falling ratings. They've been falling ever since fucking the, uh, they've been falling for fucking God knows how long, man. It's not any of these guys' fault. It's WWE. They fucked up the product. They fucked up the product with their creative writing and their creative direction. That's the reason. Plain and simple. But that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Off the script this weekend unbelievable amount of talent. I'm not even going to go over talent. Yeah, that's true. Unbelievable amount of videos that went up this week. I'm not going to go over all of it. If you missed any of it, everything you need will be linked down below in the description. Make sure you guys go check that out. I will be in Brooklyn all day today. Make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. I'll be keeping you guys updated. I will be with Justin Labar, 205th. Don't know what's going on for SummerSlam yet. I hope to get a review out as always. But if it is not out, I might have something special for you guys regardless. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening. If you did enjoy, hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. And I will see you all for SummerSlam 2000.
and 16. I'm JD. Thank you for everything all week, guys. 62,000 subscribers. Here we come. And I'll talk to you later, man. Thank you guys for watching.